How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week seven in our final season with Coastal Carolina. We will play our fourth ranked game in a row as we head on the road to face Georgia. And the Bulldogs are coming off a loss, so they're definitely going to be expecting it to win this game. Uh, it's not a great season for Georgia so far. Two and three. Negative on the win-loss so far. They were able to beat Texas A&M, who we also have beaten. They lost to South Carolina. They were able to beat LSU, and the Tigers also were not having a good start to their season. Two and three for them. Uh, and then they lost to a ranked Mizu, who's actually doing really good four and one. Uh, they lost that by a touchdown, and then they just lost to an undefeated Tennessee, who is looking solid. Top 10 now, but they have to play us. Number two in the country. We have to go on the road, so they have a little bit of advantage there, but we are looking very, very strong this season. Crushed Mississippi State, crushed Old Miss, crushed Tamu. We struggled against Oregon. Uh, that one kind of was just a weird one. We were on the road on the West Coast. Uh, maybe a little bit of jet lag coming into play, but uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the way that game turned out. Although it does make Oregon look better, which, you know, I I, I can't be too against. Uh, and then we did a decent job beating UCLA with that absolutely ridiculous touchdown from right on at the, uh, at the end of the game. So, again, fourth ranked game in a row. Texas A&M was ranked pretty high when we played them, but they've since lost a couple. Uh, so... We will definitely expect to come in here and win this one as well. Recruiting wise, we don't have a whole lot to look through right now. We're sitting with like a top 20 class at the moment after picking up our first two recruits, uh, Mike James and Marcus Brooks. And again, at this point, we're essentially only recruiting for the legacy of this team. We want to leave Coastal Carolina in a good spot so that uh, after we leave them in this dynasty, they continue to do well. Just makes us look better as a coach. Uh, we have one guy ready for visit. It is the lowest overall player on our board, Stacy Young, the 60 overall wide receiver. And we're just going to start figuring out what our next big visit will be. Uh, and I think it's going to be Mizu. We'll try to stack guys for the week 12 game. That's way uh, it's a conference opponent, but they're also ranked. So we'll get a ton of extra XP and complimentary points and whatnot for sending as many players as we can in there. Uh, otherwise, nothing super crazy is happening in the recruiting game. Uh, we're sitting up top with a lot of guys, or at least feeling very confident and in control. Um, so we'll just kind of let those recruiting battles play out and see how this class ends up. As we go to take a look at the top 25 poll for this week, uh, we have 20 first place votes behind 41 from Texas. The Longhorns just beat Oklahoma, so can't be too upset. I think that we have some ranked games. Iowa plays UCLA. Tennessee plays South Florida, a ranked South Florida, believe it or not. Uh, and then we will play Georgia. So just three ranked games this week. Fewer than I thought it was, but... Uh, I'm hoping that we win, and then there's upsets in the other two. I'm always a fan of upsets. Heisman watch Marquise Jackson dropped out of the top five, and Radon Randell surged up from out of the top five to be the number one spot, so we're just kind of going all over the place. As long as one of those two players is having a good game, I think that we should be able to go undefeated this season. And speaking of that, let's just go ahead and get into this one. Actually, let us we didn't really take a look at the matchup. Uh, we are not favored to win for the third game in a row. Georgia is an A-plus overall team across the board. They've got a great offense, uh, but not a very good defense, although they are creating turnovers. So I imagine, are they 99s? So yeah, 99s across the board compared to our 95 overall with our 93 offense and our 97 defense. Uh, I don't really know what we should wear. We'll just go black helmet. Keep it simple. And Georgia doesn't really have a whole lot that we could change them to. Although it's not crazy for them to wear black. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I prefer the, uh, the black jersey to the 2021. So we'll just go ahead and go with that. And let's get this one underway. Now, again, looking at statistics. 
for both of these teams. Offensively, they're just kind of middle of the road. They run the ball really well. We're moving the ball pretty well in general, just not running it very well. Uh, defensively, we're doing a great job. And as always, good at stopping the run, horrible at stopping the pass. Uh, they're just not very good. They don't give up a whole lot of points, but they do give up a lot of yards. Top players, high 90s overall, kind of what you would come to expect from a 99 overall team. Defensive tackle, right guard, right outside linebacker. Our top players, you know, able to compete with that. And injury-wise, we're now injury-free. Mike Fontaine is feeling nice and healthy. Uh, Georgia with a left tackle. Uh, probable on the game with a pulled groin. So here we are, Sanford Stadium. Oh man, in Georgia, looking to come out of here, avoiding the upset. Tails never fails, except for this time. We do not win the coin toss and we'll be starting with the football. No wind here today. So let's see what Marquise Jackson has for us today. Maybe a chance for him to jump back up onto that Heisman shortlist if he has a good game. The blocking solid. On the opening return, he breaks a tackle, and Marquise gets us out near midfield. So it's the offense that'll have great field position to start this one off, and we'll hope that Georgia's defense, although they don't give up a lot of points, they do give up a lot of yards. Let's see if we can uh, maybe count on them to just not be able to stop us. We'll be the team that's able to score the points. Good six-yard carry on the first play of the game for Radon. And we'll go back to the ground with a handoff to Mike Fontaine. Looking up the middle, the blocking was superb there as the gap opens up and we cross midfield with a first down. Curious to see how good their coverage is through the air. We'll look to throw five wide on this one. Tough throw and can't find Marquise Jackson on that one. I thought he was going to have just a little bit more separation on the slant route there, but it doesn't work and it's on second down. Try to hedge our bets and go with the run. Mike Fontaine, though, getting met at the line of scrimmage and just driven backwards from there. Turns this into a big third and ten. Not in field goal range. Maybe too far forward to punt, though, so the result of this play could change quite a bit on this game. Third and ten, stepping back to pass. We're going to throw the timing route, and it's intercepted. Malcolm Williams should have been there to catch it, but the ball was just a little bit late, and this one might go the distance. Kelly diving, and he's going to save that from becoming a pick six, but Georgia's defense and John Bennett coming out swinging in this game. The Bulldogs are poised to take the lead early. We've given these guys the ball at the four-yard line. And hopefully we don't let them run this one in, trying to bring pressure on first and goal. I don't want them to run it up the middle. That's exactly what they do, and Kale Mackey's there to drop them for a loss of a yard. Uh, we're going to audible to a blitz here. Looks like they want to continue to run, and they will, and it's Don Riley that time. Meeting the running back at the line of scrimmage. And I don't know if this is smart, but we're going to expect them to pass the ball. It's a toss out towards the edge. Sandcastle forces him to cut inside, and he's bouncing around, but Gabriel Walker has nowhere to go. He gains a yard, but the defense holds there, and it's going to be Georgia having to settle for a field goal. After starting their drive at the four-yard line after the interception. Although, if you're the Bulldogs, you're not too upset. That's a free three points on the back of your defense. And they're able to get on the board. First is Auburn, the number four team in the country, loses to Ole Miss. Takes their first loss of the season. Hopefully, we are uh, able to avoid being a top five team getting upset just like Auburn. Jackson, of course, returning it. And that's a mistake. Oh, there was never a chance for that one to get very far. So last drive started at the 40, didn't end very well. This one starts at the 15. Hopefully a different end of the drive. Mike Fontaine on first down, fumbles the ball, and George is going to recover it. Almost inside the red zone. This is a disastrous start to this game. That was absolutely a clean fumble that was forced by the Bulldogs. So they'll step back to pass on first down and Spencer Stanley the true freshman gets us the ball back with a first play interception what on earth he was an absolutely incredible recruit to pick up and it's translating onto the field on his first year as we will hand the ball off again to Mike Fontaine this time he holds on and gets three yards so far less than halfway through this first quarter it has been a wild game as we will look to throw once again outside the pocket goes right on and I see 
absolutely nobody open, so we're just going to scramble. Tried to stay patient and look for something, but nobody able to shake their man. All right, how about this first down carry? Offensive line. They're doing what they can, but man, Georgia's defense is swarming to the ball right now. Need our offensive line to start to pick it up a little bit more. Second and nine. We'll hope for the best here as we're going to go play action. And X was open. Y may be open. Uh, but Radon Randell can scramble. And, oh, I thought he was going to fumble the ball for sure. But he got us the first down. Not necessarily pleased with the fact that we're having to scramble. But if it gets us those positive yards, it gets us those positive yards. Again, outside the pocket. Nowhere to go with the football. We have to scramble again. Their coverage has been impeccable so far in this game. And it's forcing us to run the ball a lot more than we wanted to. Including on this one, a read option keeper for Radon. And we tried to slide down, but maybe a little bit shaken up there as Radon just took a hit. So let's hope for the best for Radon as it's David Williams, the backup, coming in. On this third down, looking to throw deep on his first play. We're going to let him release it. Malcolm Williams, or no, it's Jonathan Williams. Can't get up there to come down with it. But on fourth and four, we're going to go for it. Right on Randell, Bruce Sternum, he will return in this game. Right now, we just have to convert this one. Fourth and four, Bradshaw comes in motion. David outside the pocket. Nobody open. X is open. Can we get it to him? Bo Lamb holds on to it, and this guy has been clutch for us so far this year. Good job getting off the defender there. So we can go ahead and let Radon rest. David is a good enough quarterback. In fact, I think at the start of the season, he was a higher overall quarterback. Uh, so definitely should be serviceable in this situation. And we'll just continue to try to move the football. Not necessarily looking for bomb plays, but... Uh, Somebody gets open. I'm not against throwing it. That should be an easy one. And no. Williams to Williams doesn't work that time. Another incompletion. Three Williams on the field for us right now. Maybe one of them will be open. Third and four looking to pass. There it is over the middle. It's Chad Bradshaw. And that's a first and goal for us. Our first one of the game. And a chance now for us to take the lead. Need the offensive line to get a good push. It looks like they were kind of expecting a pass. Not really stacked up over the box as Fontaine's able to find four yards down to the five. And just like that, uh, that's going to be the end of our first quarter. Uh, interesting one. I can't be too happy with it. We have two turnovers. We have created one of our own, but uh, our turnovers have given their points and not the other way around. So to start this second quarter... We're going to be uh, hoping that we can score real quick here. Looking for Mike Fontaine, the running back. He is going to be open. Can he hold on to it? He can. And he gets in. I thought he was short of the goal line, but the refs are going to give him the spot. And just like that, three seconds into the second quarter. And we are in the lead. Seven to three. Ooh. Maybe not. They're going to check to see. Did he break the plane? Uh, that camera angle is not going to give you anything, refs. Uh, neither is that one. You gotta go, like, pylon cam, guys. Come on. What is this, amateur hour? I think he's short. I think my initial thought was right. I think the refs are gonna reverse this one, and we're gonna have to try to punch it in from the one. There you go. So the call gets reversed, and it's now third and goal from the inch line. We're going to give it to Mike Fontaine. Let him earn that touchdown anyways. Up the middle. He's got it. No problem. Offensive line does a great job. We give him the rushing touchdown. And now we can officially say it's 7-3. to three. All right. Frederick now can kick this game one off. Uh, first time this game. Deep in the end zone. No chance of a return. Let's see what the defense can do. Georgia coming out in a five-wide set to start this drive. Trips left. As we will look to... Get the stop. Maybe a screen on this one. It is going to be a screen. Oh my gosh. And of course, I'm nowhere near it with my user. Only gave up three yards. Unsurprisingly, Georgia in the hurry up is going to go and look to throw one more time over the middle. I got burns. And we're going to give up the first down. Oh, uh, I need to just use our defensive end here for a couple plays. Let's hop on board with, uh, with Wilson. 
and see if we can get pressure on this quarterback early in this game. He's going to run. That was like a designed carry, uh, but he's going to lose four out of it. Nine total yards now for Georgia's offense, although they have three points. Uh, we'll look to stop the pass. They run it, though, and they get four yards. So third and ten, a chance to get off the field for the defense. Kind of just sitting in this 3-3-5, uh, three, three, hoping for the best. We are pressed up early in this game on our zone coverage because it's been a struggle. And, oh, quarterback almost takes a big sack. Just lucky to get that one away. They're going to have to punt the ball. So we have the opportunity to send Marquise Jackson deep and also we'll have the opportunity to increase the lead so long as we can hold on to the football. Uh, a returnable kick. Blocking. Very mediocre. Marquise just gets seven yards, but we get to start with decent field position on this drive. Radon is back into the game. Uh, feeling a little bit better after getting a little bit stinged up early. And first play, Jackson comes in motion. We'll look to throw. A may be open. Let's go with the safe one. Give it to Marquise and let him pick up an easy nine yards. Radon gets his first pass completion as I think on that one. The defense just doesn't expect Marquise to be standing still. And Mike Fontaine fumbles the ball again. And it's Georgia getting the recovery. Our third turnover of the half. And I think we got to bench Mike at this point. That is absolutely unacceptable. Ah, so many chances now squandered. Quarterback's going to be scrambling, and he's got a ton of space. Can we strip the ball? No, we can't. Steven Ostrander gets 15 yards. Kind of expecting this one to go to the running back on first down. We'll bring pressure with Don Riley, and, well, it almost worked, but instead they find a gap, and he shoots through for 14. Turnovers so far have been pretty costly for us as... They are looking like they should be able to score some more points. If we're lucky, we can hold them to a field goal. Kind of expecting a pass on second down. No, they're going to hand it off. And Spencer Stanley had the chance. Oh, my gosh. That should not have been a touchdown for Georgia. I screwed that up. And now we're down three midway through this second quarter. Oh, my goodness. We have to hold on to the football. And that unfortunately means I don't think we're going to see Mike Fontaine for a couple of drives here. Marquise Jackson with a great return. Somehow doesn't have the speed to take it the distance, though. A lot of open space in front of him. Well, it's going to be time for the third string running back, Todd Warren, to get some play. Not going to overuse J.J. Barr since he is our fullback. Uh, but I just got to hope that Todd can hold on to the football and then he'll be serviceable enough. Certainly, though, we can't afford to have a running back who's going to fumble it twice in one half. Uh, George is pretty pressed up. Let's throw in deep here. Let's see how they respond with the safeties and see what kind of pressure they're going to bring. Looking to see if we can find Marquise, maybe Malcolm. Marquise is wide open. If the ball gets far enough downfield, he catches it. Not quite in stride, but he breaks a tackle. And Marquise Jackson is into the end zone. 66 yards downfield. This guy's electric, and uh, we needed that one. We really needed that one. So we uh, get back to our four-point lead here. 227 left in the half, and we're going to switch back to our 4-3. Uh, we tried to go 3-3-5 three, three, for a minute there, but it did not work on the last drive. Georgia again looking to throw. Quarterback again scrambling. And we're trying to strip the ball, but this dude has a firm grip, and he picks up 16 more yards. So we're going to have to spy this quarterback. He is willing to run all too quickly, and we'll just hope that everything else can shape out. Defense started this game so strong, but have since slowed down tremendously. This one a throw through traffic, and Ryan Smith just able to lose his man there. It is just constant double-digit plays for the Bulldogs right now. Nothing that we can do to stop. Trying to bring the safety blitz. Quarterback gets outside the pocket. He fumbles the ball, and they're going to recover it. We had two guys in the area. We just couldn't get our hands on it. Oh, that would have been another big momentum-shifting play, but it doesn't work in our favor that time. Second and eight. Quarterback looking to throw, and again, a guy wide open, and again, another double-digit play. Just unable to slow down this offense for more than a play. That one. Wow, a big hit on Joel Lawson, but he holds on. 
Lawson is the receiver that was able to pick up that last fumble. So he's uh, making a pretty big impact here. First down, trying to bring pressure. Quarterback's going to take a hit in the pocket. Stands back up and then eventually gets sacked. And Georgia takes their second timeout. Just a minute and 20 left before halftime. I'm sure they're feeling the pressure to get into the end zone here. They certainly don't want to settle for a field goal expecting the pass they actually put it on the ground and will stop him and now i'm gonna take the timeout. it's uh third and 14 and we have to expect a pass i'm gonna use a wilson see if we can get some pressure on ostrander here and they're throwing a lick of mid, mid screen to the running back terrible terrible play call we get the stop they came out in the field goal formation got called for a false start so they've been backed up five more yards as they will look to make this one on now 4th and 19. Kicker has more than enough. And yeah, it could be a little bit dangerous late in the game knowing he's got that kind of power and accuracy. So with a 1-point lead and a minute and 11 seconds left in this half, we're going to see if we can increase what we've got before heading into the locker rooms and giving Georgia the football to start the third quarter. Got to go hurry up here. We've got two timeouts to work with, but obviously we don't want to waste them if we don't have to. They're bringing some pressure as... I'm going to throw this one away. Not going to risk taking the sack, and let's just stop the clock. This is not going to be an easy conversion. Third and seven. Uh, we're going four to the right, four verts. Seeing if we can find somebody deep. Marquise on an island out on the left, and we're going to throw it up for him. If he can get past his man and hold on through the contact, which he does, we'll have a big first down. And with 45 seconds, just like that, we are across the 30 lo the 35 yard line. Uh, actually, the, yeah, just the 30. Snap the ball, look to throw. Marquise might be open. We're gonna try to throw it on the run, off balance. Can't get it there. We'll stop the clock with the incompletion. Right on now with just three completions in the game, but easily over 100 yards. <laughs> so we're just finding the bombs right now. Second and 10, 36 seconds. Looking to throw and trying to be patient, but we'll just throw it. Give it to Williams, and he's not going to get the first down. He's not down yet. Oh, my gosh. We got to take the timeout. That just burned way too much time. I wouldn't be against settling for a field goal here, but obviously we want more. Third and one. Got to pick up the first down. Trying to throw the timing route. Marquise holds on to it for the first and goal. We got to get here in the hurry up real quick. Let's see what we can do. Trying to get into the end zone. Just a couple seconds left. Marquise catches it, but isn't quite in. I don't want to burn the timeout just yet, but we need to get to the line. Oh, we've run into problems like this so often in our tenure here. Trying to spike the ball. We've got seven seconds, so we can run two plays. Third and goal from the two-yard line. The box not super stacked. We're going to give this to Todd Warren, the third string running back. On the dive, and Todd gets into the end zone just before the end of the half. We're going to increase our lead. 21-13 now. Good carry there. Now, I know that I mentioned that Georgia has a really, really good kicker, but this is kind of my signature move. We're going to try to get the kick six here with just five seconds left in the half. That was a little bit too much if we're going to recover the onside, but maybe it backed him up a little bit. This is going to be a tough field goal if they go for it. Four seconds. Well, we didn't quite get them into range where they thought about it. It's going to be uh, a, probably a run, but maybe a Hail Mary at the end here. We are in the prevent. This could be dangerous. A lot of guys in the area. It bounces around and falls to the ground in the end zone. <laughs> Always risky, but hey, we've we've proven at once, at least once this season, that it does work. You know, we can get a kick six. Thankfully, no harm done there. We head into the locker rooms up 21 to 13. Georgia will get the ball to start the third quarter, and uh, this half is brought to you by the like button. Uh, hit it today. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about our performance that first half. When the offense was moving, it was moving really quick. And then when the defense was on, they were just really shutting Georgia down. But too many breakdowns on both sides. Three turnovers for our offense. The defense has given up way too many big plays. Um, I mean, if everything continues the same way, we should win it. I think if we just don't turn the ball over again, uh, this one should be in the bag. So again, that halftime brought to you by the like button. 
Uh, if you're enjoying the video, please helps the channel out tremendously when you guys interact with the, the video by hitting like or commenting or even subscribing. So if you want to, uh, you know, help the channel grow, please consider doing one of those three things, maybe all three. And for that, I'll give you a sack. Dang it. I was so close. <laughs> one of these days, it's going to look really perfect when I time that right. Second and 10. Uh, Georgia comes out throwing, and now they're going to run. It looked like it might have been an option. I have no idea, but the quarterback keeps it, and he's going to take a huge shot in the backfield. Just nothing good happening so far on this drive for the Bulldogs. They're going to ex or will expect them to run it. Uh, I don't know. That was weird. Meant to say we would expect them to throw it, but they end up running it. Quarterback keeper again. It's 4th and 11. They just completely wasted that possession. And now we'll have a chance to make this a two-score game. And Marquise with a great return gets us out near midfield too. So things may be unraveling for the Bulldogs here. We'll continue to let Todd Warren get some carries in this one as on first down up the middle he goes. And we're following the blockers precisely for a beautiful first down there. See what we can do on this first down. Looking to throw the ball. Let's go with a quick one to Chad Bradshaw. Just past the contact. And now he's got double digits uh, on the reception. Just trying to increase the number of completions we have. Uh, you know, especially that are a little bit shorter on the passing. As Todd Warren gets another great carry and some more fantastic blocking. Uh, he's quietly having himself a good game. I feel really bad for Mike Fontaine because he's earned his spot up until this game, but Todd is showing his stuff. Now JJ Barr will come in to get some carries in. JJ can't do anything with his low center of gravity. Just gets taken down at first contact. He's able to pick up a yard, but nothing beyond that is we're looking to throw the screen here. The bubble to Warren. He's going to come down with it, and there's some space for him to work with. We get five yards and brings up a third and four. I'm going to call this four down territory. I'm not kicking a field goal, but I want to run the football. We'll give it to Todd once again, really putting the load on his shoulders at this point. And on the counter, there's nothing doing. He took a big shot and actually got a yard because of how far forward he flew. But unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Fourth and three. We could increase the lead here and technically make it. Uh, a two-score game, but we're going to uh, hope for the best here and just throw the ball on fourth and three. I'm looking for Marquise. He's wide open, and that's an easy touchdown for him. DB maybe expecting it at the back of the end zone. We go front corner, and, well, that was worth it. Instead of three points, we come away with seven on the drive. So 28 to 13 now. As once again, we'll just kick it off and expect a touchback. I don't like other teams being able to return against me if I can help it. All righty. How about this? First and 10. Looking to run. Oh, man. We had the gap stuffed, and then I just kind of missed again. Gabriel Walker gets nine yards. Georgia feeling like they need to do a lot here if they're going to get back into this game. That was my man. Completely just avoided the coverage. I don't... I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, and we give up a first down. Quarterback's now 7 of 11 through the air as uh, he's got, like, just over 50 yards. And on first down, bringing the free safety blitz. He's got... What? He's got an escape valve, apparently. Spinning in circles, he finds a way to get some positive yards. And Ostrander is just an incredibly good scrambling quarterback. Certainly better than I would have expected. Second and seven. Tight end goes in motion, expecting the run. It's an option out towards the edge, and the blocking has given them a lot of room to work with. Sandcastle and Finch are able to pull down Walker, but not before he gets 21 more yards. And now it seems like it's the running game for the Bulldogs that's doing some work on us. Trying to bring another blitz. Quarterback able to get rid of it, and his man holds on through the contact for another seven. And at this point, I'm just going to keep bringing a blitz until it works at least once, and maybe we don't have to. Offense shooting themselves in the foot with a little false start. Uh, still going to bring that safety blitz, though. Second and eight. Oh, that's me getting beat in man coverage. And nobody was surprised. I really just should never do it. So, so frustrating. <laughs> it never goes well 
First and goal. Bringing pressure once again. Hoping that they don't just run it up the middle. It's going to be a pass. Quarterback has a man, and he holds on through the contact. That was just a bad drive. Uh, I'm going to take the majority of the blame on that one. Uh, my bad user kind of killed us on that one. All righty. Uh, well, at least we get the ball back here. Up eight points, a minute and 17 left in the third, and we're going to bring this out from really deep in the end zone. Blocking pretty solid. Marquise breaks a tackle and gets almost to the 35-yard line. I'm fairly certain at this point that every single drive of ours has either ended in a touchdown or a turnover. Let's just hope it's another touchdown here. Giving it to Warren on the option, and this man is having a... Pretty solid game so far. Continues to just be able to find the gaps that the line is creating and then just making moves based off of that. Second and two, we look to the air. And uh-oh, uh-oh, got to get rid of it. No intentional grounding receiver in the area, but brings up a third down. I always feel a little bit uncomfortable scrambling out to the uh, quarterback's weak side and that time... We just kind of got cut off and had to get rid of the ball. Maybe look into Malcolm Williams on this one. He should be wide open. We don't even have to wait for him to complete the second break in his route. We can just give it to him, and that's 14 yards. Secures his first catch of the game for us as we move across midfield. And I'm sending Marquis deep on the fade. One safety is going to have a lot of decision-making. Oh, no. This DB is there, but Marquis goes up and gets it. 43 hearts downfield. It's his third receiving touchdown of the game, tying a school record. And the DB just overran the route. So just like that, back up to a 15-point lead. Didn't really spend a whole lot of time. In fact, it's still late in the third quarter. And once again, drive either ending in a uh, touchdown or a turnover. It's, uh, it's an interesting... Move that quarterback scrambling again, trying to strip the ball. I don't care if he gets yards. We're gonna, we gotta force a fumble. He is running so well this game. It kind of sucks because it feels like our coverage as a whole has been solid all game long. It's just, uh, he's got so much time to work with. Taylor, the QB spy, misses the tackle. He gets another big scramble. He can't keep getting away with it. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Could be the final play again. Feeling the pressure. Dumps it off the short throw over the middle. Gives it to his check down and it works for 17 yards. I don't know if I can count the number of double digit plays that Georgia has run in this one. Uh, will the center try to do that glitch where they do a center sneak and we tackle them? So it's the end of the third quarter. We're up 15. Georgia driving pretty strong. But uh, maybe running out of time on this one. All right. On second down to start the quarter, they're going to run it. Lot of room. Will Phillips pulls him down. Walker gets 11 more yards and brings up a first and goal. Trying all sorts of looks here. It just hasn't been enough so far. This time looking to throw. Somebody's got to be up in the quarterback. Scrambling. Big hit on him. But he's again picking up positive yards to get closer to the end zone. This is a terrible decision, but I'm bringing everybody. Given throw the kitchen sink at him. Yeah, there's going to be a guy open. <laughs> I was really expecting them to run the ball, but they throw it. And when you rush eight, there's going to be multiple people open. So easy little toss to the tight end. And Georgia scores. Well, they're going to go for two here. Five wide. All I have to worry about is the quarterback scrambling at this point. All the time in the world. Dang it, he finds him. And coverage breaks down. It's a seven-point game. 35-28 with 5.36 left to go. Uh, all that matters for me is that we score. Preferably a touchdown. Marquise, another good return. These guys are quick. Quick enough to prevent him from uh, taking one to the house so far, but he's still giving us good field position. And on this first down, uh, well, we're going to look to pass. Radon's having some success. X might be open. Oh, my gosh. So dangerous. Malcolm can't get to it. Thankfully, a defenseman couldn't get to it either. I don't know why that's the route that I decided to throw to. Brings up a second and 10 where we'll look to throw again. Pressure might be coming, and I'm just going to get rid of it and hope for the best. And Williams comes down with it. Old Johnny, 33 yards on the play. 
Radon released that one while getting hit into triple coverage. And Jonathan Williams just went up and grabbed it. That's kind of miraculous. We have no business with the field position that we have right now, but I can't complain. Handoff on the option to Todd Warren. Almost enough for another first down. And we're going to uh, maybe take a risk here. RPO. I'm making the throw. Ah, it's, uh, that was bad for me. Uh, how they were lined up, I should have just ran that. Well, we're two for two on the day on our fourth down. This is just inches to go. We're going to let Radon try to get the sneak. And he's got it. Just diving forward. Gets two yards and the drive will stay alive think that we need to maybe run the ball a little bit more designed runs at least see what Todd can do on this one not a lot of space oh man Georgia blew up the line there and there was nowhere for Warren to go second and goal it feels like they want to bring you some pressure we we're going to go with the run instead we're going to look to the air a could be open I can't get the pass off in time so we just get a yard and it's third and 11 it's going to be a risky play so maybe not the worst thing that we didn't get the throw off but now we got a long ways to go to pick up the first down on the option keeper right on Randell holding on to it trying to get every yard possible and he's six yards short of the line to gain it is incredibly raucous in the stadium now as Georgia fans feel like they've got a chance for their team to take the lead we're gonna step back looking to throw on fourth and six from inside the 15 Outside the pocket, Radon has a man open and Chad Bradshaw, but he can't, he can't hold on through the contact. Turnover on downs has maybe a second late throwing that one. But he's got to hold on to that in that situation. The field goal might have been the right decision, but I just felt like we needed the touchdown. Let's hope that it doesn't burn us too badly. Second and eight. Stepping back to throw. Georgia has a man. Sandcastle can't get him. And eventually pulls down. But it's a first and ten. We're going to take a big risk with the big blitz on this one. Two minutes left in the game. We're up a touchdown. Wouldn't be surprised if Georgia is exclusively passing. And there's not the sack yet. But there it comes. My goodness. Steven Ostrander just a monstrous runner. Brings up a second and 13 where we will try to again stave off the pass. We know it's coming. Can we do anything about it? Quarterback has a man open and Mays holds on to it through the contact for another 18 yards. Doing whatever we can, but it just doesn't seem like enough. A minute and a half now. Another pass complete over the middle. And it's another first down for Georgia. All righty, something's got to give. First down, somebody, nobody able to get there. We do tackle him inbounds, so the clock will be moving. At this point, uh, we just got to hope for the best. Almost a minute left in the game. They'll look to throw over the middle. They have it. We tackle him inbounds, but again, another first down as Georgia marches down the field here. A turnover would certainly end the game, but I can't rely on that. They're throwing it up. Man catches it. And gets out of bounds again to stop the clock. Now 18 of 22 for Steven Ostrander. Second and six. I'll expect them just to continue to throw the ball. They have all three of their timeouts still as this one's a run. And we're going to punish them for it. Hit at the line of scrimmage and they have to take the first timeout. This is a massive, massive third down. Although it's certainly... It's going to be four down territory for the Bulldogs as they're throwing it up and Smith can't get the tackle and Brandon Mays gets into the end zone. 35 yards on that one and George is going to tie this one up with a minute to play. Okay, Marquise, if you want to pick a time to uh, take one to the house, this would be it. 105 yards deep in the end zone. The blocking not quite there, but Marquise doing what he can and he gets... Are you kidding me obs it stopped recording on the kick return i don't understand how i literally touched nothing but my controller and it just decided to stop so i guess this is how we recap what happened we saw the touchdown very disappointing tie game marquise returns the kick for 31 yards radon comes out immediately with a 12-yard with a pass to malcolm williams 
Throws it to Sean Stewart for 11 yards. I don't know if there's going to be replays for any of this. Finds Malcolm again for 18 yards. 36 seconds left. We're really driving down the field at this point. Finds Jonathan Williams for 18 yards. That was a really nice play. It's a shame there's no replay for that either. And then we find Chad Bradshaw with barely any time left. Coming across the middle of the field into the end zone. And we take the seven-point lead. Georgia gets the ball. They move it a little bit, uh, 16 yards, then seven yards, but then they go incomplete on the final play of the game. A uh, Hail Mary deep down field. I don't think it quite had the distance, although it was very close. It thankfully just hits the turf and we walk away with the win 45 or 42 to 35. I cannot believe that it stopped recording in the last minute of the game. That, oh, I'm so mad right now. I am so livid. I was so happy at the end of the game because it was such a great ending. And then I look over and it says that the recording isn't going. Are you kidding me? 42 to 35, we win it while giving up three turnovers. They passed for 226, rushed for 160. We passed for 370. Pretty impressive as we win the turnover battle. Um... I mean, Marquise Jackson is player of the game. Deservedly so. Seven catches for 188 yards and three touchdowns, plus the work that he did in the return game. Don Riley has the forced fumble to his name. Bunch of tackles. Uh, I mean, their quarterback, again, we keep seeing these quarterbacks have really good games against our secondary. This guy goes 21 to 26 for 226 yards and ran it for another 72. Uh, I just, <laughs> I cannot believe it. We get the win. We improved to 6-0. We're now bowl eligible just seven weeks into the season. But I, it's just not the way I wanted it to happen. Four ranked wins in a row for us as we will probably knock Georgia out of the top 25 here. But we'll go ahead and sim towards week eight where we'll go on the road once again to play Kentucky. All right. Looking elsewhere, recruiting wise, Corey Paul goes to North Texas. That's a massive pickup. For the me and green, a 78 overall center. Uh, and this 72 overall middle linebacker, Jason Bell, is going to go to Oklahoma State. Couple guys ready for visits. Couple guys in battles. We get some XP and we stay at number two in the country. We are finally favored to win. We lead in almost every statistical category. Uh, that's good to see. Hopefully we can have a nice uh, tune-up game here against Kentucky. Take a quick look at the top 25. I imagine that Texas, no, they just didn't play. Uh, so they're still undefeated. Any losses that we didn't see? We knew Auburn lost at number four. Penn State at number seven lost to Nebraska in a 10-point game. Uh, Missouri, Washington, South Florida all losing. Tennessee now up to number four in the country. And Cal, UCLA, and Georgia drop out of the rankings. So two of the teams that we've beaten are now no longer ranked. Uh, but we're still just looking pretty solid. Our Heisman watch <laughs> is going all over the place. Radon stays at the top. Uh, Marquise, who was at the top at the beginning of the last episode, dropped out at the end of the last episode and now is back up to the number two spot. So we have potentially the top two players in college football, which I would be tempted to agree with uh south carolina has a running back patrick griffin in third arkansas's quarterback marcus warren is in fourth and kevin jones the running back for wisconsin is currently in fifth so uh all in all kind of a disappointing ending to the episode but unfortunately that's where we're at if you enjoyed this video up until the technical difficulties please feel free to hit like maybe uh maybe if we hit 100 likes i won't uh have technical difficulties anymore right one like equals one fix something like that and uh maybe uh subscribe if you want to be notified when these videos get posted both of those things help out the tr channel tremendously uh and while you're down there doing that you can head to the description where you can find links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster there's also links to my twitter uh, our community discord and as always a link to the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get that for yourself all that being said thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the deal boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later
Adios. <laughs>